We now continue our ongoing election series, Issues That Matter, with a look at the economy. Here's how the presidential nominees say they plan to create more jobs for Americans, expand the economy, and handle trade agreements with other countries. We will rebuild the middle class. We will make work pay. We will create greater opportunities for a great percentage of Americans. My economic agenda is very, very simple. Jobs, jobs, jobs. So what we're going to do is make the biggest investment in new jobs since World War II. Our tax, trade, energy, and regulatory reforms will help us reach 4 percent growth and create at least 25 million new jobs within a decade. When companies try to outsource jobs, we're going to make them give back any tax breaks they ever got. Under my plan, I'll be reducing taxes tremendously, from 35 percent to 15 percent for companies, small and big businesses. That's going to be a job creator like we haven't seen since Ronald Reagan. It's going to be a beautiful thing to watch. We are going to raise taxes on the wealthy and close loopholes for corporations to make investments in growing our economy. We're cutting taxes for the middle class, and I will tell you, we are cutting them big league. I have said nobody who makes less than $250,000 a year, and that's the vast majority of Americans, as you know, will have their taxes raised. I'm not going to let Wall Street get away with murder. Wall Street has caused tremendous problems for us. We're going to tax Wall Street. We should build on the Dodd-Frank financial reforms and go even further, because Wall Street can never, ever be permitted to threaten Main Street again. If we don't get the deal we want, we will withdraw from NAFTA and start all over again making better deals for our workers. It's going to be America first. It's America first. The answer is to finally make trade work for us, not against us. I will stop any trade deal that kills jobs or holds down wages, including the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Ohio governor and former Republican candidate John Kasich visited the White House last month, pushing Congress to approve the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Kasich focused his presidential bid on promoting the economy. When he became governor, Ohio's jobless rate was 9.2 percent. Nearly six years later, it's 4.7 percent. Governor Kasich has not publicly endorsed any candidate. He's with us now from Columbus, Ohio. Governor, good to see you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Nora. Let's talk about the issue of trade. In that first presidential debate, we heard <clears throat> Donald Trump say, mention Ohio as a state that has been hurt by international trade. Your response? Well, look, we're up 430,000 jobs, and we think actually trade is good. But, Nora, the biggest problem we have is we don't have a system to retrain people. Look, trade is really about innovation. It's about growth. It's about serving consumers. And the, uh, the Pacific Trade Partnership is not just about the economics that, that can help our country to continue to innovate, but it's also geopolitical. In other words, if we don't approve this, frankly, who wins? China, with a leader who's become the most repressive in a very, very long time, and Russia. So we have a lot of little countries out there that are saying, we want to work with the United States. And to tell them no is really a big mistake, not only from uh, an economic point of view, but also from the standpoint of geopolitics and our ability to be strong in the Pacific. But it is really, have, yeah. But we have, to, we have to retrain people, though. See, the problem is, Nora, as the economy train, as the economy changes and innovates, because we're now in a, in a idea economy now, as it changes, we ha can't leave people behind. Our system of job training in this country is totally broken and needs to be fixed, and Congress has got to do something about it. We're trying to do it in Ohio to give people an opportunity to be able to improve their lives by giving them skills governor, to compete in a new economy. But, Governor, are you saying that, in fact, trade does uh, mean a loss of jobs, but what we have to do is train those people? Are no, you acknowledging cases, that trade does lose jobs? No, in some cases, Charlie, old industries, you know, we don't make buggy whips anymore, right? It, but if you lock the doors in our country, consumers will pay more and more jobs will be lost. So the fact is, is that there is a change. Look, 
we don't make the Apple inside of the Apple uh, phone anymore, right. but we built the Apple phone. We designed the Apple phone. We created the Apple phone. It's better to work making computer chips than potato chips, frankly. And so, but those people who are stuck, who are in the old industries, need to be retrained. Mm -hmm. Frankly, in our, our state, we're pushing a program to continually improve people's skills. We're working from kindergarten to retirement. We don't have that in this country right now. And frankly, our education system, K through 12, and including much of yeah. higher education, is not functioning and serving our people okay, very but well. Let, let me stay with that. Apple has a lot of their profits they're making from selling those iPhones. They're still overseas, so do we need tax reform so those profits will come back and create jobs here in America? Well, what we know, Charlie, is that we have the highest corporate taxes in the world a, a, among the leading uh, industrial countries. And so what happens is people park their money overseas. Democrats and Republicans both agree on this. It'd be great to be able to get that money back to America so we can help either well, with they tax agree on it, cuts. Why don't we have that change in the law? Well, because Congress can't seem to get out of its own way. They can't agree on anything. If, if Democrats are for something, Republicans are against it. And if Republicans are for something, Democrats are against it. Mm -hmm. Look, I went down there to help the president with trade. I don't agree with, with Barack Obama on a lot of things. But I go down there to help him because I happen to believe in free trade because it's good for our country. And I get criticized because I go to the Oval Office to sit with the president. When I was in Congress, it was a privilege to sit with the president and work yeah. for the good of the country. Yeah. Governor, We're losing I, that. Yeah. Governor, I was at the White House when you visited, and I, I want to ask you, honestly, did the administration tell you they can get this trade deal done before Barack Obama leaves office because neither presidential candidate supports it? Well, it doesn't matter what the presidential candidates say. And frankly, you know, candidates say one thing when they're running and they change their minds later. I don't know if that'll be the case. Uh, with these two. But what I will tell you is there is an opportunity in the lame duck if the Republican leadership wants to push and the Democrats will provide some votes. The real question is how hard will the president push for this? And, uh, and look, I'm going to do everything I can to help the White House on this for the simple reason that this is in the best interest of the United States. And all this anti-trade talk, this takes us back to the time when people were attacking machines. You remember when, Charlie, yeah. you remember, yeah. you lived back there, you were reporting. You remember <laughs> yes, when I the was Luddites were attacking machines and saying they're going to put us out of work? It doesn't have to work that way. We want to out. Yeah. Yeah. We we take your take because we, we have a short on time, but right. we want to get your take. Donald Trump is saying that this election is rigged. Is it? No, look, I, I've run statewide in Ohio, and you know, my first election was extremely close. Look, to say that elections are rigged and all these votes are stolen, that's like saying we never landed on the moon, frankly. <laughs> that's how silly it is. No, I just, I don't think that's good for our, our country, for our democracy, and I don't believe that we have any massive fraud. One of my great friends here is the head of the Board of Elections. We, we don't have that. That's just a silly argument. The problem is it does create doubt in people's minds, and I worry about 25% of Americans who may say when an election is over, it was stolen. That right. is a big, fat joke. Are you going to vote for the Republican nominee tomorrow? No, I already said I wasn't voting for him. And you're you going to vote that. for the Democratic nominee? No, 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 no. I don't know what I'm going to do yet. I might write your name in, Charlie. <laughs> no, I think I Nora. <laughs> <laughs> you can start something there, Charlie Rose. All right, Governor Kasich, as always, we really appreciate you joining us. We wanted to Thank focus you. on the issues, and, and we appreciate your time. And you can watch CBS News coverage of tonight's debate beginning at 9 Eastern, 8 Central. And our resident cartoonist, Liza Donnelly, will live draw the debate tonight. So follow CBS This Morning on Instagram for an Instagram story that shows the process of how she sketches the debate.